Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching Where with Sim again. Hope you guys are all having a great day so far. And in today's video, we're going to be going over um, the storm that's going to be coming after next week. That will bring some risk for severe storms. And we will continue to keep seeing changes with the storm, so it might as well be next week too as well. We're not really sure when the storm will exactly be here, but this storm should be here either next next week or after next week it just depends on how everything wants to play out but as of right now we're gonna go ahead and start talking about the storm and what it's going to do and what it looks like so far and I mean we're still like a few weeks behind so we can't like prove that all of this is going to be happening. We still have to keep watching for more changes with the storm. So we'll have to um, keep our eye on this. But as we do take a look at uh, storm predictions. Sorry, I just wanted to take a look at this. Because we do have a general risk for thunderstorms across the Pacific Northwest. And then even portions of the Rocky Mountains. Not really a big concern today. Especially because it's not very widespread. But... I mean, it's something to keep an eye on if you live in these areas. But we take a look at Climate Prediction Center 6, a 10-day outlook. We do have a chance for above-average temperatures across southern Florida. It's in that dark pink area, so well above-average temperatures could be possible across that area, which is good because Florida kind of needs to see well above average temperatures especially for um how hot um people are used to or at least um for how um hot it usually gets there it's okay to see above average temperatures in florida so if you guys live in florida just enjoy those hot and nice temperatures if you can and this will be on november 10th to november 14th when this happens but we even got a chance for above average temperatures in the northern united United States, which is good because they have already seen a ton of snowfall and even um, chilly temperatures, which was a big concern. It didn't become historic, but it was a big concern, though. But if we also look, we are seeing above average precipitation for most of the southern United States, especially the southern half of the United States, but also southern Texas, getting into New Mexico is where we'll most likely see above average. Average. We even got a little area up here in Washington around the Seattle region that could also see above average precipitation. But I mean, this is kind of, it's kind of good that we are seeing rain for the south because, and we will talk about this in a second, but they're in that like moderate to exceptional drought. So we could definitely use rain across a lot of this area, including Florida. They actually did have an extreme drought across the Tampa Bay area so we could definitely use some there too as well 8 to 14 day outlook we do have a chance for a well above average temperatures across the Dakota which is still good especially after we have had so much um, below average temperatures across that area we even had snow so much snowfall but if we also look we're seeing above for much of the southern United States gain into all of the west coast especially um, Florida and even even California seeing the best chance for above average precipitation. Same goes for Alaska, but I mean, this, this is kind of just going to be interesting as we keep um, gaining into the future. This will just keep getting more and more interesting as we um, as we head into the next couple of days. We'll have to see it see what changes happen but i mean this is this is something to really keep an eye on if you can and then temperature outlook we do have a slight chance of below average temperatures across the new england area this is for well up below average temperatures so make sure you guys are game prepared for that if you do live in new england precipitation outlook thank goodness we do have a chance for heavy rain across the south region they 100% need that the soil is completely dry and so we could definitely use a lot 
and they could also definitely use a lot too as well and then down here we could also or I mean up here we do have a chance for heavy rain too as well and this does for the exactly same day 11 November 11 to November 15th and that goes for both of these areas so make sure you guys are being aware of this make sure to be on high alert for any severe storms possible as we get into next week so make sure you guys are being aware of this snow outlook no snow outlook but wind outlook just an area for the west coast especially across eastern or southern or western oregon getting into western washington and even portions of western california but as we get into the drought monitor or as we look at the drought monitor we are seeing a ton of exceptional drought droughts across the south because if you look across mississippi and much of louisiana we're seeing those anywhere from extreme severe to exceptional drought or even seeing one for tennessee which is um not really good at all because i mean droughts are already starting to ramp up everywhere guys that is kind of just nuts but if you also look some of the exceptional droughts like in the dallas fort worth area and stuff like that have already died down which is amazing we we needed to see rain there anyway but still like a little bit of Oklahoma, even a little bit of Texas, or some of Texas, gain into much of Mississippi, Louisiana, and even starting Tennessee, seeing all of those extreme to exceptional droughts, which isn't going to be fun at all still if we keep not seeing any rain. And I mean, areas could definitely start ramping up. But, but if we look at the excessive rainfall outlook for today, we do have a chance for um per flooding at least a marginal risk for flash flooding which is a small threat but we will definitely be seeing some heavy rain across this area and this goes for portions of southern oregon or southwest oregon gain into northwest california so that's where we'll have to watch for some excessive rainfall day two outlook may be a little bit more concerning especially because it includes a more popular city and also more widespread across this area day three outlook probability is less than five day four same thing probability less than five and then day five that is where we um, will start to see flash flooding start to ramp up again and we may even see a few slight risks after day five so we'll have to see about that national weather service advisory warning display as we do see we got some dense fog advisories around even for the um, upper ohio valley too as well even indiana illinois but if we also look we even got some high wind warnings in effect across this area right here which is going to be kind of a concern at least it's something keeping on if and if we look at the high wind warning gusts is up to 60 miles per hour are possible so make sure you guys in laramie wyoming and even around laramie use extreme caution whenever you guys are in these high wind warnings just use extreme caution when driving and wyoming is kind of used to high wind warnings so it's not like gonna be super um rare or anything like that it's just gonna be something to be aware of so that's why i did show you guys that <laughs> but we take a look at the radar that is anywhere from now to november 21 and as you see not really not really a whole lot of concerning with snowfall especially because we're not seeing a whole lot for the central united states but i mean rockies are already starting to see some snow but i mean they already seen enough snow to where we probably don't have to really keep talking about it anymore they already seen plenty of snowfall so i mean they're already getting used to seeing snowfall now at least by how much we already have had so i mean i wouldn't think we would have to keep um talking about the rocky mountains region but we will i will still be showing you guys all the snowfall that has occurred there and if you guys want to you guys can go skiing because look we're seeing up to 38 inches of snowfall from today to november 21 which is a lot of snowfall but New England this is where it gets a little bit more concerning especially because it's in an area that that doesn't like really see snowfall this time of year 
but time of year, <laughs> yeah, and, um, we're seeing, like, up to three inches of snowfall for portions of the Alban Albany region, which is a big concern, I mean, they're kind of, like, for the higher elevations and stuff like that, so, I mean, this, this is kind of just nuts, like, I wouldn't expect a whole lot of snowfall this time of year if, um, I lived in New York, but I don't. I do not live in New York. I live in the lower Ohio Valley, but, I mean, this is something to really be aware of if you, if you do live in New England and will continue to see snow start to ramp up as we get into December. But if we also look at the precipitation outlook that is anywhere from now to November 21, and as you see, it's significantly good that we are seeing a lot of rainfall for Southern Tennessee getting into North Northern Alabama and Mississippi, they extremely need the rainfall a lot, so good thing we are seeing some beneficial amounts across a lot of this area, and this will be anywhere from now to November 21, and if you also look, it is kind of a concern that we are seeing some pretty high amounts across a lot of this area, and we'll have to keep watching, because I mean... We, we could definitely be talking about some flash flood events as we keep heading later because if we continue to see excessive rainfall every day across the northwest, we will, we'll have to watch for river flooding. So make sure you guys are getting prepared for that if you live in the northwest because, I mean, for just how much rainfall we already saw the last couple of days and then today into November 21 we're still even seeing more rainfall and this is rainfall still to come we're definitely talking several feet of rainfall this is kind of just nuts so I mean we're definitely talking some flood events up here as we get later into the month of November at least at least um, next week into the week after next week is when we'll really have to watch for all these um, severe weather, flash flood events, and everything like that. So, I mean, this storm could be nuts. But still, make sure you guys are being aware of this if you do live in the Tennessee, um, Kentucky Valleys, getting into the south region, even the lower Ohio Valley could see some decent amounts, getting into Arkansas, um, Oklahoma, and then even much of Texas across the Houston region. They kind of need that rain too. But if we look at the um, radar, we're going to go ahead and take this four. And as you see, we're talking a little round storms on November 9th. We're going to take this forward. And as you see, we got um, uh, some high pressure systems around. Like if you saw this one right here, I'm really sorry about that. If you see this one right here, this one will kind of keep this area dry for a moment. But then as we keep heading later, we will see kind of like a line of storms on November 7th. This could bring like a slight risk of severe weather across the south region. Then as we keep taking this far, we'll see a low pressure system developing across the lower Ohio Valley or even southern Indiana. And I mean, we, we haven't really seen low pressure systems go through the Ohio Valley and down into the... Um, south region or even the southeast region like north carolina so i mean to me this is kind of rare i just haven't really seen the pressure systems really going southeast and through the ohio valley so i mean this is kind of just nuts so we could definitely be talking talking a pretty big outbreak of some severe storms because if you look, that storm, that line of storms will continue to stay together as it pushes through southern Indiana, gaining into central Indiana. It just doesn't show it being a lot of storms through um, this area of Indiana because this goes like 12 hours or something like that between every time frame that this thing moves. So. So yeah, it's not really going to be exact, but yeah. And I mean, we'll continue to see changes as we keep getting farther. This is, what, this is what's expected so far, so make sure you guys are kind of getting prepared for tornado season. Because I mean, for how we are already seeing this, guys, there is a possibility that we do see our next severe weather events in literally months because our last severe weather event was most likely in August where we seen that um, 
10% chance of a tornado across um, this area right here. That w that was our last tornado event, and we didn't really see any tornadoes across that area. Most of it occurred across northern Alabama, but still, that was our last 10% chance of a tornado. So if we see that again, this that will that will likely be our um, severe weather threat in months. So make sure you guys are still game prepared, even though we haven't seen severe weather ramp up. But as we look at the um, the jet stream, we're going to go ahead and take this far. We'll see we'll see a low pressure system up north that's lower than 1,000. So that could definitely bring some snowfall and even some um, thunder, maybe maybe some thunder across that area we're gonna go ahead and take this forward and I just realized I accidentally changed it I meant to go to the GFS model that was just an accident but then after that fine but then after that low pressure system finally heads out then we will start to see some um another low pressure system across almost exactly same areas especially for Michigan but then that finally heads out then we'll start to see a low pressure system move across the lower Ohio Valley into the Tennessee Valleys and even through the mid-Atlantic states and into the southeast and then as we keep taking this forward we'll continue to see more and more we'll, and, and we'll also see a low pressure system here that could bring a risk for a few severe thunderstorms as we get into November 19th where we will see this develop across Illinois, Indiana, and even a little bit of Kentucky where we will see that low pressure system stick around. Then that will finally head out and move through the Atlantic stakes. So I do want to be honest with you guys. I'm just going to say this one more time that this could be one of our next severe weather events in literally months because it's been two, uh, at least two months before since we've seen our last severe weather event it's been two months literally be before we've seen our last severe weather event so i mean this is kind of just nuts to me seeing um already severe weather starting to ramp up and i mean that did give you some time to get prepared so which is good because i mean it gave you at least a few months to get prepared for more severe weather so if you guys haven't gotten prepared you need to do it right now before this ends up coming on november 19th so i'm just going to be honest with you guys we'll keep seeing changes as we get keep gain later into november but not at all of these will be um will be true some of them will continue changing and changing and changing so we may see a completely different pattern set up as we get into november 19th but as of right now that is what it looks like temperature outlook we're gonna go ahead and take this forward and we're gonna go on November 5th and as you see we'll continue to take this far we'll continue to see warming temps all the way till let's see we'll continue to see warm temps till at least November 10th where we will see those 70s 60s maybe even 80s especially across the south region we'll continue to take this forward and as you see we'll see another warm-up as we get into November 18th and with all those hot um, temperatures across November 19th, like in those 60s and even and even um, 70s and even a few 80s around, we're definitely talking a little fuel for severe thunderstorms. So I'm just going to be honest with you guys, this could be our next severe weather event. We'll have to keep our eye on this and we'll continue to see changes because it's really early before all of these really happen. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll continue to keep you posted on if we will see a severe weather event.